Ganze. Und das kommt man geht dann mit David Patik und da bis ist nicht so gut wie ich es kann. Aber es sieht das Kawaii ja wo geht es nicht mehr nach Amago da zig ja ja nein die Idee ja zig Kawaii geht zig. Da war kein das kommt mit nach und Yugi auch. Api Yugi ich in das gehen an. Nicht du auch. Und die Boys. Aber gar nicht du gar nicht du ist nicht gut da wie geht zig in das kommt mit nach Api Yugi ich. My name is uh, Arlen Dumas. I am the Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. We represent 62 of 63 First Nations in Manitoba. I'd like you to welcome you to uh, Treaty 1 territory. As you've heard, it's the ancestral lands and sovereign territories of the Anishinaabe, Creed, Dakota, and OG Cree nations. Thank you for inviting me to your national conference to end homelessness. It's heartbreaking that in 2017, we are still required to have organizations and conferences of this sort to help solve the issue of homelessness. Having said that, I do think it's a great conference and has a special focus on, on homelessness and on indigenous homelessness. But it also occurs to me how sad it is that First Nations people whose land we are all living on are homeless. Our relatives should not be living in these conditions on their own land. Prior to contact, our communities didn't have homeless people. Everyone had a role to play. Everyone was taken care of. But as our way of life was forced to change, so did our family structures, along with the quality of life and our homes. A cultural genocide was committed by the government of Canada. Indigenous people could not even practice their ceremonies or their culture for a hundred years, and those that were able to had to do it in secret. Our relatives on the street are those people and have many teachings to offer if you just take the time to listen. For the indigenous people who are homeless, we all know there are several reasons why they are on the streets today. And it stems from a lifetime of racism and the consequences of Indian, Indian residential schools and its intergenerational impacts. We know this, but how do we solve it? At the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, we have a program called the Eagle Urban Transition Center. It offers a holistic programming delivered by Indigenous staff who work with clients and their families to navigate their way into, the city, into city life. The program services over 18,000 clients a year. There was also a concept that was developed by Indigenous people. At the Urban Eagle uh, Transition Center, is constantly adjusting their programs and supports to meet client needs. For our people, moving from a rural setting to an urban one can be very difficult and challenging. Everyone sort of prescribes to their own understanding and their own worldview, and, and we, we accept and appreciate the world in, in what we've been conditioned or what we've been, we've been trained to appreciate and understand, and sometimes we take for granted that many of us have different walks of life, different experiences, different, different uh, uh, examples in our lives. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a quick example just to, just to more fully appreciate that. In this country today, we still have people who essentially live 100 years ago. There's still people in Manitoba, in Canada, that still have to haul their water in order to drink water. There's still people who don't have proper sewage in their, in, in their homes. You know, we have people who have different experiences in this very country, you know, in this, in this very province. So earlier this summer, we had a, a, a forced evacuation. There was massive forest fires. You know, there was, uh, uh, it was interesting because the, the people who are responsible to look after our interests decided that, uh, you know, individuals or human, human lives weren't, weren't important enough to release uh, water bombers to go put out fires that were close to First Nations reserves. 
Sadly, when the infrastructure of Manitoba Hydro became vulnerable, the water bombers were sent out, you know. Then, you know, the children right across the street here, uh, the children that were coming, you know, many of them come from remote and isolated communities in the north. And I'd come and visit them and check on them every once in a while. And then uh, I, I was walking past the escalators, you know, and, uh, and I, I, I saw a security guard and he was having quite a difficult time trying to shush the kids away, the little children away, and, and you know, get them, you know, he said, please, please, he was really, really polite. And I had to go over and talk to our children and say, hey, go see your parents. But the reason why that individual had such a difficult time is because those children from remote and isolated communities had never seen an escalator, and it was like an amusement ride for them. So something very common and something that we take for granted is something quite unique to people who live in quite a different uh, situation than, than, than we appreciate ourselves. So we have to understand and recognize that our experiences are different from non-Indigenous people. Um, one of the events during this conference is called the CEO Sleepout, uh, as the, as a couple, as the uh, mayor had mentioned. I applaud those people taking part. The goal was to raise a million dollars, and after five years of this event, they are less than $150,000 away. I hope that after the CEOs finish raising their initial goal of $1 million, they will continue to draw attention to the homeless population and continue to help out. It is also my hope that people who come out to support the CEOs as they spend a night on the street Remember that lo the love and supports that they are giving the CEOs is not the reality for those living outdoors. The homeless don't get coffee or hot soup brought to them throughout the night. They don't get sandwiches. People aren't there to cheer them on to, make, to help them make it through the night. And they certainly don't have the respect and admiration of those people passing by them. How many of us walk past people on the street asking for a hand up because we were too busy going to work, going to meet our friends, going to drink coffee, or we're just too embarrassed to make eye contact? Some homeless, for various reasons, choose not to access support and services. How do we help them? Well, we can do that by giving, them, by giving things to them directly. There are staff members at the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs who have created friendships with the homeless of Winnipeg. They know their names and some of their stories. They help them out directly, whether it's with money, food, a cigarette, or by simply just talking to them. If they have nothing to give, if they have nothing to give that day. And I applaud that. Those homeless people are, are people, they're individuals. We're supposed to be living in a first world country. First Nations communities still have no running water, as I said before, and uh, that shows us that we're not living in a first world country. Looking around at our inner city relatives on the street shows us that we still have a long way to go. How will you contribute to ending homelessness? Those of you who consider yourselves our allies, remember you are a placeholder in your position at an organization serving Indigenous people. Remember that you are on our land and maybe it's your turn to start speaking up instead of always counting on the most vulnerable, people, vulnerable peoples to share their stories of trauma. It is up to each and every one of us to treat each other with dignity and respect. So, can I ask you now? Can I do? I have to scratch the amigo, man. Can I ask you now? Can I ask you now? I think we go ask you. I I do the amigo. We we see at the end of the day. So, I go see. I ask you, man. I'm just going to ask you. I give you biggest question. I go see.